Now we can do a multiple choice math question. It's based on a question that appeared on the power prep that's available from gre.org. and You can download it as long as you have a PC. If you sign up for the official GRE these days, they'll send you a CD, but that's only available on PC as well. It's not available on Mac. Like any multiple choice question, we have five answers. We have 1140, we have 1200, we have 1440, we have 1540, and we have 1600. Do you have your answer yet? Not so long ago, I had two different students come into consecutive classes in Berkeley and San Francisco and said, Oh, Dave, there's the answer. Well, I looked at the problem first. There's a really popular GRE class. It's so popular that they have lots of students and they each need a chair. In the first row, they have 20 students. Now, if this were testing for the public, that would be all that was available because we limit our classes to 20 students and we make sure everybody sits in the front row. But they had a lot more students because they were very popular. So in each additional row, they had six more than the previous row. How many chairs did they have? Do you have the answer now? Well, I noticed that there were a lot of 40s in the answers. But my students noticed something even first. They said, gee, Dave, 1600 and 1540 and 1440 are really close to each other. Then we'll pick the center answer. And I noticed that there were a lot of 40s, and one of those was B. And then I noticed that there was something about 6 in the problem. And then 40 and 1200 are 60 apart, and 1540 and 1600 are 60 apart. And we look for relationships between answers that reflect the structure of the problem. And then there's one answer that's a stranger, and that stranger is pointing to the right answer, which is B. But you're probably saying there must be a strategy that involves math, not just answers. And of course there is. We have 20 chairs in that first row. And then we've got lots of rows. We've got 20 rows, and that means we have 400 chairs. Do you see how the answer grid reflects the structure of the problem? 1140 and 1540 are 400 apart. And 1200 and 1600 are 400 apart. And there's our stranger again pointing us to the right answer. But we've got lots more chairs. In that next row, we've got six more chairs. And then we've got six more chairs. And we've got six more chairs. And we've got six more chairs. And we've got all these chairs. We've got 19 rows extra. How many chairs do we have? There must be a formula. Well, what am I drawing? I'm drawing a triangle. And that triangle's formula is base times height divided by 2. And that's because this triangle is really like a rectangle that was cut in half. And that middle row had 6 times 10 which meant it was 60 in that middle row 
and we had 19 of those rows, which meant we had 1140 chairs. And there's our answer, isn't it? 1140? Oh. Oh, we forgot about those 400 in the beginning, didn't we? And that's why 1140 points us to 1540. But if they didn't have 1140 there, we couldn't have found our middle mistake if we got halfway through. And that's what multiple choice math is all about. If we thought there were 20 rows instead of 19, we would have gone from 1,200 to 1,600, and they gave us that answer for it as well. And if we just can't plain multiply, they're going to give us something that's 100 off. But they're going to give us predictable mistakes. And we can take advantage of those predictable mistakes to find the answer right away. And then we can take advantage of those predictable mistakes to look for the structure of the problem in the answer grid. And then after we've looked at the problem and the answer grid, we avoid the predictable mistakes by doing the last step, which was the easiest step of adding the first 400 chairs. Testing for the public. Nonprofit since 1985. Nobody makes things easier.